hopefully those went okay. We've got one more set of exponent rules to review here, and that is fractional exponents. When an expression has a fractional exponent, it can be written as x to the, and then all in the exponent, a divided by n. So that's the fraction we're talking about, the a divided by n. This can actually be interpreted as the nth root of x to the a, and when we write that, the x to the a is under the radical sign, and the n just sits right before the radical, kind of tucked into the check mark there. Another way we could say this, we could just reverse the order. When we write the nth root of x to the a, it's kind of understood we would do x to the a first and then the nth root, but we could also write it the opposite way and say the nth root of x, put that in parentheses, the whole thing, and then put it to the a power. Now note, there are very simple cases of this, like x to the one half is just the square root of x to the first, that's just the square root of x. And x to the one over n power would be just the nth root of x. So those are kind of simplified cases of this x to the a over n. Now, an expression with decimal exponents is difficult to interpret unless the exponent is actually a rational number. And that's because a rational number is one with a fractional equivalent. Let's just go through a few together and make sure you understand the concept here. So we're gonna start with 27 raised to the, and then all in the exponent, one divided by three. So it's to the one third power. So the one is the power and the three is the root. So this is the cube root of 27 to the first power. Let's write that. It's the radical sign with a three tucked into the check mark and then 27 to the first power. Well, 27 to the first power is just 27, and the cube root of 27 is asking what number, when multiplied three times, gives us 27. And the answer there is three, because three times three is nine, times three is 27. Next, we have four to the 0.5 power. Now, luckily, we can write this decimal as a fraction. So this is the same thing as four to the 1 half power and that would simply be the square root of four, or you could think of that as four to the first power, and we know that the square root of four is two, because two times two is four. Great, pretty easy so far. Let's try eight to the two-thirds. We're first gonna write that as the cube root of eight squared. Now, if you're having trouble remembering which one, the numerator or denominator becomes the root and the power, think of it like this, you have eight to some fraction. Here we have two thirds. And I want you to think of that fraction like it's a tree. And the denominator of the fraction is like the bottom of the tree. And the numerator of the fraction is like the top of the tree. Well, what's in the bottom of the tree? The roots. So the three is the root. Just think of that exponent, that fractional exponent as a tree. So that gives us the root three and then eight squared. So let's do the eight squared first. That gives us the cube root of 64. So now we need to think of a number when multiplied three times gives us 64. And the answer is actually four because four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. Tricky, huh? It's actually easier in the other way. So I. I wrote it a second time so we could practice it that way. It's still the cube root and it's still a square, but I'm just doing the order differently. So inside the parentheses, I have the cube root of eight and outside the parentheses, I have the square. So the cube root of eight, that's one we should know, that's two. And then all I need to do is do the square on the outside. So two squared would be four. And this should help you see that no matter which way you evaluate it, it should come out the same. All right, two more of these. 16 to the 0.75 power. Well, what fraction is 0.75? It is 3 fourths. So this is 16 to the 3 fourths power. The root sits in the denominator, it's the bottom of the tree. So that's the fourth root of 16. And let's do the third power on the outside. You'll find it's easier to do the roots first and then the powers simply because you'll take the number down in size before you bring it back up in size. So the fourth root of 16 is two. And so now we have two to the third power and that is eight. Finally, 25 to the three halves. 
half is the bottom of the fraction, the bottom of the tree, so that's the root. It's a square root. You can write the two if you want, but you don't have to. And then we have the square root of 25, and we're going to do the cube after the square root of 25. We know the square root of 25 is 5, and so 5 cubed is going to be 125. Okay, so hopefully we understand how to do fractional exponents. We won't do a lot of them, but you will see them here or there, and it's important to have some idea of what they might mean. Now, one of the reasons we like these fractional and decimal exponents is because it's actually easier to evaluate a radical expression if you rewrite it as a base with a power. So we can do the evaluation easily in Desmos. Let's just try a couple examples. So the cube root of 10 would be the same thing as 10 to the one third power. The power on 10 is one and the root on 10 is three. So we would simply evaluate 10 to the one third. So we'll type 10, use the A to the B button and then type one divided by three. And that gives us 2.1544 rounding. In the next one we have the fifth root of 100 and that's 100 to the first power so when we rewrite that that would be 100 to the one fifth the root is five it's the bottom of the fraction the bottom of the tree so let's go back to desmos and calculate that one we type 100 a to the b and then the one divided by five power which gives us 2.5119 when we round I'm using estimation signs to do that rounding off when I write it. So not an equals, but a set of squiggly equal signs. So not an equals, but a squiggly equals. Finally, we have the cubed root of five squared. So the five is the base. In the numerator of the exponent, we want two. And in the denominator of the exponent, we want three. So we want to evaluate five to the two thirds power. So we'll do 5, the a to the b button, and then 2 divided by 3, which gives us 2.9240 rounded. So we can see the calculations are actually fairly easy once we write things as fractions. Now, just to make sure you understand, I want you to try to do this next problem yourself. It's the last problem in this video. I want you to fill in the table of values below without using a calculator. So it's two rows. The top row is the x value. It's uh, values of 3, 2, 1 half, 0, negative 1 half, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. And then the bottom row, we're going to evaluate all of those x values for 10 to the x. Now you're just going to write what the expressions are. You do not have to get the decimal values for them. But just pause the video and give that a try. Make sure you've got the hang of this. Okay, we're back. Let's see how you did. The first pair would be 3 and then 10 to the third. 10 to the third is going to be 1,000. It's 10 times 10 times 10. The next one is 2 and 10 squared. 10 squared is 100. The next one is 1 half. So 10 to the 1 half, we could rewrite that as the square root of 10. Then 0. 10 to the 0 would be 1. Then negative one half. Now let's just start by writing this as 10 to the negative one half. That negative exponent cries, move me. And so I would write this as one divided by 10 to the positive one half, or one divided by the square root of 10. At negative one, we would do 10 to the negative first. That's another move me. It's a nice easy one. It's just one over 10 to the first, or just one over 10. At negative two, we'd have 10 to the negative second, which is one over 10 squared, and that would be one one hundredth. And then finally, at negative three, we would have 10 to the negative third, that's one over 10 to the positive third, or one over 1,000.